guys, welcome back. It's Jen with Happy Humble Home and it's Friday, so that means it is time for this flashback. So before we jump into that, don't forget to subscribe. All right, hey guys, so let's go ahead and take care of a couple of housekeeping things real quick. So if y'all could do me a really big favor and go ahead and subscribe to my channel and then don't forget to click, click the bell so that way you'll get notified when I post new videos. I've noticed that my um, subscriber views versus unsubscribers is really, really high for the unsubscribers. So if you could do me a favor, go ahead and click that link. That would really help my, not click the link y'all, sorry. Click the subscribe button. That would really help my channel out and that would allow me to be able to do more content and everything like that and bring y'all more content on my channel. I would also love to hear like some kind of video as ideas that y'all might like. And so this channel is based more around like our homeschool, st um, our homeschool journey. So if you have any questions about that and how we decided to make the transition from public school to homeschooling, I could do a video on that or, you know, just more about our homesteading journey here in our neighborhood. Cause clearly we don't have like, you know, an unforeseen amount of acreage here. Um, so more about that or the cooking, the homeschooling, just everyday life here. So yeah, if you could just do me a favor and click that subscribe button, that would really help me out and the channel out. And like I said, in return, I would be able to bring more content to y'all and be able to reach y'all better um, that way. So yeah, I think that's really all the housekeeping stuff. So y'all are the best. I really appreciate each and every subscriber and all the comments and everything. I really appreciate it all. So y'all are wonderful. So as y'all know, I've kind of had some speaker issues. So hopefully I got a new little speaker thing here. So fingers crossed that will make it better. I am sorry about that. I've been trying to figure out ways to accommodate that since I had issues with my phone and then this phone has speaker issues. So a lot of technical issues going on on the channel that I'm sorry about y'all. I'm trying to figure it out uh so far we've had a really good week and all right hey guys so hopefully that like i said this little mic thing will work but i wanted to show you all something that i got in the mail today so i got a tortilla press if y'all have followed me on my instagram before you've seen in my stories where i've made tortilla shells using sourdough but the shape was not that pretty the thickness was probably not where it should be but we have this tortilla press, so I have opened it clearly already because this handle was separate and it was just tucked in, um, this handle was separate and it was just tucked in here. But we're actually going to use it. I have not actually used it for the first time yet. So this is a cast iron skillet, or not skillet, sorry, cast iron tortilla press from Victoria. I guess that's how we, yeah. Yeah, Victoria. Uh, there you go. Can you take that box for me? Thank you. All right. All right, hey guys, so I already have, I'm trying to get everything in here. I already have my iron skillet here warming up. Like I said, this is the tortilla shell press. You just open it and it's just a basic press. So we're gonna have some fun with this. I've, oops, I've never used one of these before, but it looks like a lot of fun. And I have my two sheets of wax paper here. I just tore it in half. And my sourdough here. So we're just gonna get a knife here and cut my sourdough into equal, kind of equal sizes. And typically, I usually weigh these, but I'm not going to today. I'm just gonna kinda eyeball it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna roll it and we'll see if it actually works. I have no idea what I'm doing, y'all. Like, I read the instructions and I've seen people use them, but I've never personally used one, so. Let's have some fun with it. So they said kind of set it a little off to the center. So let's press it and see if it, oh, I forgot to put my parchment paper on the top. So, all right, let's re-roll that one. But it actually did work out right here. I'm gonna turn it around this way so y'all can see where I got a nice little like print now. Uh, let's do a little bit bigger. These are probably gonna be a little bit smaller. You know what, I'm gonna make these a little bigger. There you go, we'll do it that way. I'm probably kind of too small, so hopefully this whole mic thing works, but 
I'm not sure how I like this cord going, so we'll probably have to redo that. But right, so let's go. So we're kind of they kind of said set it off to the side. So we're gonna put our press down there, and then we're just gonna press it right, really good. Ah, and it made a little round tutorial. I'm so, see, there you go, and then it just peels right off. I'm actually gonna press it a little more, I think. Because I do want it a little thinner than that. And I think that, again, this is error use. Because I've never, I've never used one of these. So I'm still playing with how hard to push, how hard not to push. There we go. That's definitely better. That's definitely bigger. And then we're just going to pop it on there. And we'll just... So we're just gonna play around with this y'all if y'all have any tips for using one of these please let me know because like I said never actually used one at all so yeah so I right, so let's flatten it and then we're trying to I'm trying to not pull my phone too y'all it's not working well that's all right we'll get it maybe if I like All right, and look at that, y'all. Oh, this is so cool. And it's, it's maybe a little, I don't know if you can kind of see like how thin it is. And may looks like they're still kind of on the thicker side. So we're going to try to see if I can push it down maybe a little more. We're going to try to push it down a little more maybe. and see and that handle does fall back so note to self on that and sometimes oh there we go y'all that was a good one yes I like that one much better it's much bigger and you can see how much thinner that is so yeah I'm just gonna have fun playing around with these right now so yeah all right so put it Kind of put it in the center here. Now, push it down. Now, yes. Yep. I wish. Yep, really hard. And just hold it for a little bit. Okay, now stop. Now let go. Watch it, that falls down. So just gently lay it down. I figured that out the hard way. So lift it up. Okay, we want it a little thinner, so we're just going to kind of move it to the side. Yeah, I'm, right, I'm going to reach behind you. Yep. Ha ha. And then just redo it. And then just kind of hold it down. You didn't know you was going to get two workouts today, did you? That's not. That should be good. All right, go ahead and lift it up gently. There you go. And there's your tattoo. This is my tattoo of Shell It is. That one has your name on it. And I see. You're going to put your name on it right, right here. You want to do another one? Right. So, roll that up in a dough ball. Watch out. Ha ha. There we go. That's hot. Still probably get them a little thicker. I think I might need to make my dough a little bit thinner, maybe. But, again, this is just trial and error, playing around with it. So, like I said, if y'all have any good recipes or any tips for using one of these, definitely let me know in the comments below. But, yeah, this is a fun little new gadget we got. Okay. Right, so put it kind of off to the center, off center, just like that would be the center. So just off center, just a little bit, and put the put that on there and shut it down. Ooh. Mhm. Mm be careful, don't. Yeah, right, stop, because you can see it coming out kind of on the side a little bit more, so go ahead and lift it up, and then scoot it over. It's oval. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Scoot it more in the back. There you go. Okay. 
Okay. Is that Nathan? Oh. Whew, that one was hot though. Alright. You wanna try one, Nathan? Oh yeah. Yep, so. Oh, sorry, that was my last one. I lied, never mind. But yeah, so that's my little tortilla press, y'all. So like I said, any tips or tricks? Right. Hey guys, so we're here at Walmart and I have some paint samples. If you've been following my story, you know that I'm redoing a trunk and I'm trying to figure out the paint that I would like. I'll actually show y'all the trunk more later in this video, but these are kind of the color palettes. I know it's kind of a weird color palette, but that's what we're going with right now. All right, so it's been a little while since I've done kind of an update on our front flower bed. So I'm gonna turn y'all around and kind of show y'all where the progress has been made so far. Okay, so you can see here my rose bush has gotten a lot bigger. I did just clip off, you can see right there, some little blooms. I did just clip off the, a couple buds because it's really helped it kind of go out more and up. It's definitely shot up in the last, honestly, just the last couple days. This is my catnip. I think some cat or something. We do have like a neighborhood cat. Something has like the middle of this has clearly decided to make its own little home. But this, I've seen a whole lot of pollinators on here, which is what I really wanted this for. Plus it's good for headaches and just calming anyways. So I do have catnip some dried inside. That's my lavender. It hasn't bloomed yet, but it's definitely growing. So I'm happy with that. Over here, you can see my thyme right there has gotten really large. My Cuban oregano is like going crazy on the show. And that is my basil. It is humongous. I actually did start clipping off the flowers at one point, but I decided to leave them because one for pollinators and two, I want them to I want to play around with if it will self seed. So that is my large leaf basil. That was two plants and it's now ginormous. I'm so happy with that y'all. And then over here, of course, this is my lavender again. Most of these I leave on. I try to catch the ones that are going over the edge here. I try to catch, uh, cut off those flowers. So I need to come out here and straighten that up because I do want it contained in here. But again, there's a whole lot of pollinators that are really liking these flowers, so I'm just gonna leave it. That is my lemon balm that I started from seed. Out here, I just put some seed in the ground and it started into that. You can see, look, that's really pretty. Nice baby. And then over there is my sage. It's definitely gotten a lot larger as well. This is my calendula. And as you can see, some of it's starting to die off. And some of these heads, I come out here, I kind of do a combination with the heads. I let them dry so that way they will, again, drop their seed so they can self-seed is what I'm hoping, is what I'm playing around with on those. Some of them I actually cut off and then I dry them inside. So I have a little jar of the calendula flowers inside and then the other ones I'm just like I said I'm just kind of playing around because I do have more seed inside to seed start if I want to but I am playing around with a lot of these flowers that I want to self seed so that's why I'm playing around with it. Why is that one? Got some Yankee thing growing up in there y'all. Right. So that's why I'm playing around. You can see a lot. I need to come out here and take off some of these flowers anyways. Um, but you can see like right in there, I do have one that's starting to grow up more in the midst of other ones. So kind of starting to die off, but not really, sort of. And then over here, my yarrow has doing really well. I do have some of that starting to dry. I've been drying several bits of that as well because I'm trying to make sure I don't take too much of my herbs as well. So we do have my yarrow, it's definitely starting to grow. You can see over here where some yarrow's growing in the middle of my plantain, but that's okay. I'm, a, I'm honestly okay if that kind of mixes together. So that's where the front beds well, are like going. I said, so there's always room for improvement and learning because like I said I'm playing around with kind of what can self, what I can get to self sow, what I need to actually seed start because there was about three or four things that didn't, even though I planted the seeds, it started out good and then it died because of the heat or it didn't come up at all because 
I really needed to use the transplants for it and seed start it, but I didn't have that at the time. So, you know, lesson learned. And show y'all back here in my other stuff in the back. Now I am working on cleaning out this other bed where our green beans were that didn't work at all. I don't know if, I'm not really sure what caused my green beans to just be there one day and gone the next pretty much. But I'm working on getting that bed kind of cleaned up because I do want to do garlic here this winter. I do want to add parsley to the front in the fall. I'm going to turn y'all around okay, again. So there is my lovely carrot that is still just flourishing. And this one, is, this is only little, I can't think of the tenet, correct term for this. But anyways, this is the one that started to die off a little bit. You can see a couple other ones are starting to turn, but these are all still nice and white. These are the carrots down here. I'll probably just go ahead and pick them. But again, I'm wanting to play around with how long they can stay in the ground past just for like preserving it type thing if i didn't want to use these yet i wanted to eat on them this winter or something so i'm going to kind of play around with that so i'm not going to pick them right now they're not really in the way at all where's, where's all that y'all sorry um i'm well, not really in the way so my tomatoes over here y'all they did absolutely nothing this year i got a couple tomatoes but okay that one looks actually pretty decent but I'll have to show y'all some of my other ones that one never did absolutely never did produce any fruit it had a whole lot of blooms but there was never any fruit that it produced and we had a windstorm rain the other day and that's why it started to fall over and I honestly I haven't done much with it I just kind of gave up on it to be perfectly honest which probably not the best thing to admit but you know it is my rosemary though is doing beautifully and then this one produced some, and so did it. So, so did this plant here, or plants. My rosemary again is doing good. Taters have already. So I wanted to show you one of my tomatoes. This is like how they looked. Like they had that crack on them, and then all like that. Every single one of them that actually grew looked that way. So I'm not really sure why they started really late in the season, and then even when they did start growing, it took them forever to actually ripen up. And then, on top of that, that's how they look. So I'm not sure what caused that. It just, it's not a good year for my tomatoes. But, you know. So if y'all have any ideas why it may have been like that, please let me know in the comments below. Because I did try to disrupt the roots on that one to try to shock it into um, producing actual fruit. I don't know if maybe I didn't do it enough. But either way, it just was a no-go on carrots, or not carrots, on tomatoes this year. But my carrot, though, I'm, I'm definitely getting better at the carrots, and I'm learning more each year. So I'm thankful for that. And everybody I talk to that does carrots, they always seem to have a hit or miss or never can quite get it really good. So it makes me kind of have hope maybe that I'm not screwing up too bad. But that's our latest garden update. All right, guys. So here is the trunk that I was telling you all about that I'm re- finishing or refurbishing whatever you want to call it but as you can see around here this part I've already sanded off and that's how it looks because it was like an old military trunk type thing that we got you can see where I haven't sanded this part down very well it's got handles on both sides the lid is just a solid lid that hooks on with these on both the front and the back and as you can see um, here this top like these this and these corner pieces are all metal but this actually, it's not a metal. It's, I don't know if you can kind of see it, but it's like, almost like flaky kind of. I don't really know what that texture is. But this is the trunk that I'm going to redo. And my plan is going to do all these, all the metal hardware and even these pieces right here, all along it will, all along the sides and the bottom and top of the trunk will all be black and then the wood piece and then the top the middle part of the lid will probably be like this dark stormy sky green color it'll, i think it'll go really that's too dark i don't like that i think it would look really well in here because the gray walls and all that we have so i want just something that's small and i like the greens so that's what this trunk refurbish 
is. Again, you can follow me on my Instagram. I'll always leave my Instagram tab and tag in all of the description box. Be sure to follow me on that because that's where I've been posting more updates with the trunk so you can kind of see it come together. I will post it some on my YouTube channel too, but a little bit more about it will be more on my Instagram stories. So be sure to check that out. We've had a pretty decent, decent week this so far. I mean, it's it's been another week of getting things done you know it's been a good week overall I do want to mention one something. thing that I do want to mention is this Bananaopoly game I don't know if any of y'all have ever heard of this or played with this again not sponsored or anything but this is just a game that it's a multiplication game okay. and like a year or two ago at Once Upon a Child so I really don't know where you can buy it you could probably just look it up but it's just like a multiplication game as you can see, it's got one side has where it has the um, factors to make that number. And then the other side doesn't have that little extra help. So this is a lot of fun. You basically just try to get six in a row and you can block people or there's ways you can, if you get the banana, then you can either remove somebody else's tag or something like that or make it any number that you want it to be. But it's a really fun game to just kind of review multiplication facts and it's nice that it has kind of the harder side where you have to think a little bit more versus just all the help but yeah we had a lot of fun playing that this morning it's been a while since I've got that out of the closet but I just want to see if if y'all have ever played this or anything let me know because I'm pretty sure there's some other fun ways you could do games for younger kids that don't multiply yet you could probably just do a trying to find like if you roll the six then find the number that has a six in it or find a number that has a six in the tens place or something like that on the board that you can make fun for younger kids that aren't quite at the multiplication age yet or quite at the multiplication skill level I should say rather um, but yeah I just thought that was a really fun game the boys asked to play that this morning since it was a Friday morning and I'm like well it's always good to review multiplication facts so yeah, that was a lot of fun. We did that this morning. And, you know, it's been, it's been going good. There's really nothing, nothing super exciting we have planned or anything like that. Work will be concessions is starting back up this week. So there's that. It's that time of year already. And... We do actually have another hiking trip planned out for a couple months out, so it'll be probably one of our coldest ones yet. Well, okay, let me not probably not the coldest one because I really don't think we're gonna go below the 20 that we did in our last hiking video. If you have not watched that hiking video, be sure to go check it out. I'll leave a little link up here. I'll leave an eye card for it, but it was a lot of fun. But I really don't think we're gonna get below 20 trying to go later in October but you never know Tennessee weather kind of is always a hit or miss so anyways that pretty much wraps it up here this week as always y'all have any questions or comments be sure to leave them in the comment section below and remember don't forget to click that subscribe button so that way I can bring y'all more content and again I appreciate each and every one of you subscribing to me and leaving the comments and talk um, give me your feedback I really appreciate it hopefully this new mic works out better so if you could let me know in the videos if that's kind of this new mic is helping out or not but I will leave yeah that pretty much wraps it up y'all have a great weekend